You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible. A text without context is dumb. Of course, in English, dumb has two senses. Someone who is said to be dumb is unable to speak. Often they've been rendered unable to speak by somebody else's action. Texts can be dumb in that sense. We can render them unable to speak. The other sense in which we use dumb is when someone's stupid, we say they're dumb. Both senses are applicable to my saying, a text without contexts is dumb. For our first example, let's look at the best-known psalm in the Old Testament. Psalm 23, look at verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Okay, let's ignore the bit about the table and the enemies, and focus in on the you anoint my head with oil. Let's forget all we know about the Bible, all we know about the ancient world, and just think in today's terms. When do people anoint their heads with oil round here? Well, my son puts gel on his hair when he's going out on a Saturday evening. And, come to think of it, my dad used to put some stuff called brill cream on his hair years ago. Ah, obviously, this guy is going out of an evening. So, you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Why is his cup overflowing? Well, presumably they're in the pub and they're drinking, and the guy who's pouring is a little bit tipsy, and, well, you know the rest. With this example, the Bible context starts to set us straight. Anointing. Who gets anointed in the Bible? Kings and priests. The ancient Near Eastern context may help us even more. Maybe you've read about the perfume cones that they used to use in ancient Egypt. Cones of uh, waxy stuff impregnated with perfume that they set on their heads and over the evening it melted and sent out a lovely smell. The Bible context also alerts us to the double meaning of cup. It's not talking just about the things we drink from. It's also talking about our lot in life, our future, and all the rest of it. Think of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Or take a look at another well-known Bible passage. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. What does it mean there to say that humanity is created in the image of God? Again, without context, presumably it means we look like God. Can't think what else in the image of could mean. He's the image of his dad, we say. So, we look like God. Well, no, we don't. You may, but I don't. I'm a balding, ageing, ordinary bloke. Text without context is dumb. Where did you find images in the ancient world? You found images of emperors. In every city of the empire, just about. A dirty great statue of the emperor, to remind you who ruled. We are created in the image of God. God rules, okay? And of course in temples, but that's another story. So, texts without context is dumb. But there's also our context. Whether we recognize it or not, whether we like it or not, our context impacts our reading, and we can't avoid it. Just think about the way in which because the Bible was read for generations, mainly, in public at least, by men, the women's stories in the Bible got forgotten, over overlooked and ignored. Or listen to my post on praising the fraudulent agent for a cultural example. We need to dialogue with the text in its ancient contexts, but also to dialogue with other readers and hearers of the text, if we're going to make sense of it. A text without contexts, plural, is dumb. So, that's the message for today. A text without contexts is dumb. Don't be dumb. Bye, see you next time.